Hi, I'm Robert Hurt. Thank you for tuning in to our monthly video address. Our office is here to serve you, and I would like to first remind you all that any 5th District residents who wish to join the ranks of our United States Military Service Academies should please visit our website at hurt.house.gov and submit your forms no later than October 1st. As I travel across the 5th District, I'm constantly reminded that the people of the 5th District are suffering in this stalled economy and that they remain committed, as I do, to getting our country back on track and restoring the prosperity that generations before us have known. Our work on the Financial Services Committee this month is focused on restoring that prosperity by ensuring that the JOBS Act, bipartisan House-originated legislation that was signed into law by the President, is removing government barriers and helping to create the jobs it is intended to create. Additionally, we hosted veterans at the committee to find out how we can serve them better by reducing homelessness among our veterans. This is important because they have given so much to serve us and to protect our freedoms here at home. And finally, the CFPB director, Richard Cordray, testified before our committee as a part of our important responsibility in conducting oversight over this massive new agency. This past month, the House passed bills include the National Security and Job Protection Act. The impending across-the-board cuts, which would devastate our military, are certain to have a devastating effect on Virginia's 5th District. But the Senate and the President have consistently failed to put forth any sort of proposal to ensure that these arbitrary cuts will not negatively impact our country, our soldiers, and our national security. This month, the House took action, again, by passing the National Security and Job Protection Act, which will ensure that these devastating cuts to our military will not take place at the year's end. We also passed the No More Cylinders Act. We were all outraged when we learned that millions of taxpayer dollars were spent on a failed loan guarantee to Solyndra. So the House acted this month to make sure that sort of fiscal mismanagement never happens again. And finally, the House this past month has also served as a necessary check and balance against the White House's efforts to roll back important elements of welfare reform. You may have heard that the President recently decided to waive the critical element of welfare, which requires that those receiving assistance be actively looking for work. So this month, the House passed legislation to ensure that all Americans can achieve prosperity by stopping the President from circumventing the current law and retaining the critical features of welfare reform that maintain work as a central focus of helping those American families in need achieve self-sufficiency. Like the dozens and dozens of House-passed bills that will return our nation to limited government and unlimited opportunity, these three bills await action in the United States Senate. And finally this month, we were horrified by the murder of Ambassador Stevens and three other Americans in Benghazi, and we have kept those families in our prayers. We were solemnly reminded once again of the tragic events that took place on September 11, 2001, and those innocent Americans and heroes whose lives were needlessly lost. But most important, this month we were reminded of the resilience of the American people who in the face of tragedy do not back down. We were reminded that any affront to our freedoms only unites us further in a shared commitment to preserving and protecting our ideals and our American opportunities from those who seek to do us harm. The tremendous sacrifices by those on September 11th, by those who serve this country in Benghazi, and by those who continue to serve this great nation at home and abroad are the reason that Americans across this country continue to live in peace and freedom. Thank you, and God bless America.